So what is the singularity problem? Or rather, what is the problem with singularities? Well, singularities are thought to occur either at the heart of a black hole, or, depending on your point of view, at the end of a big, big crunch, or the beginning of a big bang. In physics, they've actually caused quite a bit of a problem in reconciling the physics of the very large with those of the very small. When you try to reconcile them to describe what is actually happening in a singularity, all sorts of odd things start to happen to the relevant equations, involving just not infinity, but infinity plus infinity. It's due to this difficulty that modern physics is spending a lot of time trying to come up with either a way to reconcile the issue, or to find new models and theories of the universe. To understand the crux of the problem, we must actually look at what a singularity actually is supposed to be. A singularity is where the matter is crushed to such a great extent, rather than occupying a very small area, it's compressed into a single point. If you accept that a vast quantity of matter can actually be crushed into a single point, then you have to accept the problems caused by it. However, there is hope out there. There is an old question, if a frog is in the middle of a pond, and in the first leap it jumps halfway to the edge of the pond, and in the next leap it jumps half as much again, and then half as much again, and so forth, how many jumps will it take the frog to jump to the edge of the pond? The actual truth is, it will never actually get to the edge of the pond. You get closer and closer and closer and closer to the edge, but never actually make it. Now, there are actually real-life examples in physics of things like this. For instance, there's Boyle's Law, which covers the law of gases and pressures. If you double the pressure on a gas, you halve its volume. And it keeps on going. You keep on doubling the pressure, you halve the volume. But... It, no matter how many times you increase the pressure, the volume will never become zero. Now, how does that help with the singularity problem? Well, if we follow through the same logic, the enormous pressures in a black hole will trend towards a singularity, but never actually make it to the singularity. This means that the mass of a big crunch could be compressed into something the size of a planet or something the size of a tennis ball but it will never actually be to a single point. Without the existence of a singularity the differences between macro and micro physics are actually relatively easily resolved if we say that a singularity won't actually occur.